The success of everyone involved in today's modern dairy industry is directly related to the consumer's demand for high quality, safe dairy products. To meet the consumer's demands for these standards, processors continually seek high quality raw farm milk. Procurers and marketers of raw farm milk are very aware of the increased emphasis on quality. As a result, dairy producers are typically rewarded with milk quality based incentives. Component levels in milk, such as butter fat and protein, also have a great impact on dairy producer payments and processor expenditures. The only way to evaluate the safety, quality, and component levels of milk is by an analysis of a sample that accurately represents a particular lot of milk. Inaccurate sample analysis results caused by poor sampling methods or improper sample handling procedures can compromise our food safety system have a detrimental impact on the quality of dairy products produced for consumers and have a significant financial impact on producers and processors. For these reasons, the importance of proper sampling procedures and sample handling cannot be emphasized enough. In this video, we will discuss proper milk sampling techniques and the proper physical handling of milk samples. We will also cover some of the basic laboratory analyses performed on milk samples. This information should provide you with a greater appreciation for the importance of following proper procedures regarding all aspects of milk sample collection and handling. First, let's discuss the regulatory requirements regarding individuals who sample milk or physically handle milk samples in Kentucky. The key point to remember regarding sample regulatory requirements is sample chain of custody. All individuals who physically handle milk samples that can be used for payment purposes are required to possess either a sampler weigher's license or a tester's license issued by the University of Kentucky Division of Regulatory Services. Laboratory personnel will obtain the UK tester's license. The following groups of individuals typically obtain the sampler weigher's license. Milk haulers, transport drivers, sample couriers, and milk receiving personnel. Usually, individuals who are issued a sampler weighers license by UK will also be required to obtain a permit from the Kentucky Milk Safety Branch. Depending on the milk test performed, lab technicians may also be required to be certified by the Kentucky Milk Safety Branch Lab Evaluation Officer. The license is associated with responsibilities relating to sampling or testing milk for pay purposes. The permit is associated with responsibilities relating to food safety matters. Prior to an individual performing sampling or sample handling, he or she is required to obtain a temporary license and a temporary permit. These temporary documents provide the opportunity for a new employee to perform official activities under the supervision of a licensed supervisor. This training period provides time for new employees to become thoroughly familiar with their responsibilities and the rules and requirements regarding sampling milk and the handling of milk samples. Similar requirements exist for laboratory personnel. They obtain a temporary tester's license and receive appropriate supervision and training. After adequate training, both sampler weighers and testers are required to take a written exam. After successfully completing this exam, and demonstrating the ability to perform their responsibilities, an applicable full license and permit will be issued. All individuals who have responsibility for care of milk samples are required to be licensed. Possessing a license ensures that the sample chain of custody is maintained. Now let's examine proper milk sampling procedures. The dairy industry utilizes the universal sampling system the universal sample may be used for all routine and special tests required for regulatory and dairy industry quality programs. These testing programs include analysis for butterfat content and other component testing for milk payment, for the presence of antibiotics or drug residues, somatic cell counts, or harmful levels of bacteria. After a milk hauler determines a producer's milk is acceptable for pickup, a sample is obtained with a sanitized dipper. The sample will be placed in a properly identified sterile container. 
the container is identified with the producer's number and tank ID, date and time, including AM, PM, or military time, milk temperature, and the hauler's initials. Care must be taken to prevent distortion of the computer barcode whenever barcode labels are used. All information must be recorded legibly with a waterproof pen. The milk must be well agitated prior to taking the sample. The dipper is rinsed in milk at least twice to remove any remnants of sanitizing liquid. The container must be filled away from the bulk tank's opening, and care must be taken not to touch the inside of the container or the container's lid. The sample container is filled approximately three-fourths full, or to the container's fill line. This allows enough airspace for the lab technician to mix the sample properly prior to laboratory analysis. After the sample is obtained, it must be immediately placed into the hauler's insulated sample storage case in an ice and water solution. The ice and water mixture ensures the sample will be maintained at the mandatory temperature 32 degrees to 40 degrees Fahrenheit. The use of a floater or rack in the insulated sample case helps to maintain the water level at approximately the same level as the milk in the sample container. This helps to ensure the sample remains at the proper temperature and prevents water from contaminating the sample. At the hauler's first farm pickup, he or she will obtain an additional sample to be used as a temperature control. The temperature control will be identified with the same information as the producer's official milk sample, plus the initials TC. The temperature control sample must remain with the hauler sample set at all times. Each farm tank on the hauler's route will have a separate record and will be individually sampled and weighed. When the hauler arrives at the milk plant, he should have all paperwork accurately and fully completed and arrive with a complete set of samples. The milk receiving personnel will examine the hauler's paperwork and samples and evaluate the tanker's milk quality and obtain a tanker sample. This sample will be used for antibiotic testing and other tests of milk quality. After the load of milk is determined to be acceptable or is cleared for unloading, the milk hauler can begin unloading the milk and will transfer the samples to the plant's sample storage refrigerator. Each plant is required to have enough sample storage capacity, typically representing three days bulk milk shipments. The samples should be placed in the refrigerator in an orderly fashion. The type or style of the sample container will determine the degree of caution required when storing the samples. In all cases, the storage procedure should maintain the sample's integrity and prevent the occurrence of leaker samples. Now, a licensed person at the plant has responsibility for oversight of the samples stored at the facility. This will usually be one or more of the receiving area personnel or a lab employee. The licensed plant representative is responsible for monitoring the condition of samples in the refrigerator. The refrigerator is required to be monitored with a recording device or to be checked daily to ensure the proper sample storage temperature of 32 degrees to 40 degrees Fahrenheit. A daily log record should be kept for the refrigerator with entries that include the date, time, including AM, PM, or military time, temperature, and licensed person's initials or signature. Similar requirements are also established for sample storage refrigerators found in laboratories. Usually, a licensed sample courier will arrive on a routine schedule to pick up these samples for delivery to a testing laboratory. The courier will check the sample storage conditions and record his observations. If at any time the sample storage conditions are not appropriate, such as the temperature being too warm or freezing, clear notation should be made and the sample should not be used for official testing. The sample courier is responsible for carefully packing the samples in a manner to minimize leakers and to maintain the appropriate sample storage temperature. When the courier arrives at the official testing laboratory, he will transfer sample responsibility to the lab's licensed personnel. In some instances, samples may be required to be shipped to the laboratory. When this occurs, the person packing and shipping the samples should be licensed, and the person receiving and unpacking the samples should be licensed.
If the temperature of a set of samples is ever questioned, the temperature control should be double-checked and used as a reference. If these procedures are carefully followed, the sample chain of custody will be preserved. The sample chain of custody is very important. If a milk quality or regulatory test result is challenged, a legal chain of custody is required for the test results to be valid. Now let's discuss what happens to the sample when it arrives at the laboratory. It is important for all licensed individuals who sample and weigh milk or who physically handle milk samples to have a basic understanding of quality control and laboratory concerns related to milk production and dairy processing. This example represents the typical composition of milk. The main constituents of milk are water, butterfat, protein, lactose, and ash. Dairy herds will have their own unique milk composition, but the constituents will vary around levels similar to these. Factors impacting milk composition include the breed and genetic potential of the dairy herd, herd health, the producer's feeding program, and the season of the year. A higher level of butterfat in milk results in a higher price for the producer. This is just one example of why accurate milk sampling is important. Milk samples are regularly analyzed for butterfat and other milk components, somatic cell counts, bacteria counts, antibiotic residues, and added water. Other tests conducted on milk samples include analyses for sediment, aflatoxin, and pesticide residues. Many of these test procedures must be conducted within 48 or 72 hours from the time the sample is obtained. The results of these tests, in part, determine whether a producer's milk is acceptable to be marketed and will impact the producer's pay price. Butterfat Tests for butterfat can be conducted using one of several test methods, but most tests today are conducted using elaborate electronic instrumentation. Somatic cell counts Somatic cell counts are an indication of general herd health, particularly regarding mastitis. Somatic cell counts exceeding 300,000 per milliliter will prevent most producers from receiving a quality premium. Milk with counts exceeding 750,000 cells per milliliter is considered abnormal and exceeds state and federal standards. Somatic cell counts can be obtained with a microscope or with several approved electronic instruments. Somatic cells tend to rise with the butterfat portion of the milk. Therefore, adequate agitation is extremely important for determining a herd's actual somatic cell count. Bacteria Bacteria are virtually everywhere. Some bacteria are harmful and some are not. All milk will contain some bacteria. Producers put forth a tremendous amount of effort to keep bacteria in their milk at a minimum. Bacteria counts exceeding 100,000 per milliliter violate state and federal standards. When this level is exceeded, corrective action must be taken immediately. Milk haulers should always follow proper procedures to keep bacteria at a minimum. This includes using good hygiene and sanitary equipment. Also, never touch the inside of the sample container. Make sure the farm tank is properly agitated. Sanitize the bulk tank outlet valve and always keep the sample between 32 degrees to 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Improper procedures can result in an exaggerated bacteria count, causing the producer to lose quality premiums or even result in preventing the producer from being able to market his milk. Antibiotics The presence of antibiotics in milk is illegal. Each tanker load of milk is screened for antibiotics prior to being unloaded. Some people are allergic to antibiotics and could die from exposure to them. This makes antibiotic testing one of the most important safeguards for the dairy industry. Stringent action is taken whenever illegal antibiotic residues are found in a producer's milk. Added water. Added water tests are conducted using a cryoscope. This test is also referred to as a freezing point test. It is illegal to add water to milk. Milk with added water is considered to be adulterated and cannot be sold. Water can unintentionally get into a producer's milk tank through improperly working milk systems or poor milking procedures. Haulers should use precautions to ensure their activities do not result in a positive added water test. 
This includes double rinsing the sample dipper to eliminate water and sanitizing solution from the dipper prior to sampling, and using a floater or a rack to store sample containers in the insulated sample case. This helps to prevent water entering into the sample container. Also, it is important to make sure the milk hose is disconnected from the bulk tank prior to rinsing. Sediment. The sediment test involves filtering the sample and evaluating the filter disk. A soiled filter disk indicates the milk has not been properly protected from dust particles or that udders and teats were not properly prepared during the milking procedure. Aflatoxin. Aflatoxin is a carcinogenic mycotoxin produced by mold that develops in corn, cottonseed, and other feed ingredients that have been grown or stored in hot, humid conditions. It enters the food chain when animals ingest contaminated feed. The dairy cow converts the feed form of aflatoxin into a form referred to as aflatoxin M1. In milk, the violative level of aflatoxin M1 is 0.5 parts per billion. Whenever aflatoxin levels exceed acceptable levels, the milk source is taken off the market until the levels become acceptable. Pesticides Pesticide residues are also a serious health concern. They can unintentionally enter milk when dairy cows are exposed to pesticides. Milk containing pesticide residues is considered adulterated and cannot be processed. Pesticide residue testing requires specialized facilities and is regularly conducted at state and federal laboratories. Every aspect of sampling the milk and the subsequent handling of the milk sample is important. The sample container must be properly identified and include all of the required information, including the specific time. We have identified several test procedures that must be performed within 48 or 72 hours. If the time or any other information on a sample container was incorrect or omitted, an improper test result could be assigned to that producer. Think about the consequences a producer could suffer if this occurred. Improperly agitated milk can result in incorrect test results, particularly for butterfat, somatic cells, and bacteria. Samples not maintained at the proper temperature can also detrimentally impact these test results. Samples that are not properly taken, identified, handled, or analyzed in a timely manner are of little use. A mistake in any area of the sample handling process can result in entire sets of samples being discarded. Worse yet, a mistake in any of these areas can result in inaccurate test results. Licensed individuals are trained and should be well aware of proper sampling and sample handling procedures. Use of proper procedures is your responsibility and your status as a licensed individual obligates you to work within the parameters of these regulations. Every aspect of your job is important. Don't find yourself falling to the temptations of taking meaningless shortcuts. The dairy producer, dairy processor, consumer, and you have too much at stake. When each individual involved in handling milk samples takes time to perform his or her job correctly, everyone wins. Dairy producers are rewarded for their efforts when they produce high-quality milk. Processors are able to produce high-quality dairy products. Our state's dairy industry is in a better position to thrive, and consumers can be more satisfied with high-quality dairy foods.